and big data is a really abused term. And if you think about what, what, when we say, what, what does big data mean? Big data means giving access to data that people previously didn't have access to. Mm -hmm. Access to data in a timely fashion that used to be 24 hours instead of five minutes, yeah. or combinations of data. So when we think about what we're really generating here is a data lake of data that you've never had access to before. And then you can plug in many different applications into that. Yeah. How, are you, how are you generating the speed on this data lake? You know, this is big data, you know, it's a lake full of bits. And so how do you generate the speed you have that performs the analysis on that? So there's a couple of things you need to be very clever about the way you ingest the packets. So for example, if, I, if all I really care about is the caller, the callee, the duration, I may kick off the phone call then ignore everything till the end of the session. And that, so you, you're kind of clever about what you're physically storing. And then we have um, new specific technology around the database that can store things at a level previously not physically possible. Yeah. Okay. So By an order of magnitude. And like you're saying, you're leveraging techniques to kind of mimic from some of the big data providers out there. Yeah. It's interesting you, you cite Facebook so often as kind of the, the leader in, in what, what you're and talking Google, about. Yeah. And Google, yeah. And, 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 and Google. So, so Facebook it doesn't have a reputation of, of being good for privacy and being good for security. So how are they doing so many interesting things and yet their reputation isn't kind of following them? Well, as a, as a technologist, if you look at their, the way they defend their systems for using ML, I believe that's the, be that's the, the best system that there is. Yeah. So, the, so their problems are more in a PR and maybe their, their policies, their, their internal policies versus their technology, which you're applauding. And also, I, thought, I think yeah, people always like to dig at Facebook, but uh, <laughs> you know, that, that some of the technology, they have, people don't believe, people believe they have some of the best technologists in the world. Yeah. And they've applied that when you look in, under the covers in a very... They probably don't want criminals to know how they're doing it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so a last chance on the microphones for questions, and I'll just uh, I'll ask one more before we wrap up. So um, do you guys, does, does your, your company seem to can retain the focus on the security aspect, or can you take this, this big data, this data pool you have, and expand it into other customer service elements and things like that? Or do you see being able to take it, take what they brought to you the company, and expand on it? Sure. I mean, uh, the the idea is um, we're talking about a platform, and of course the the focus is fraud because it's a big pain. Uh, but um, uh, the platform is capable of uh, um, you know supporting any kind of potential application. Uh, so we are uh, looking at different industries, obviously the financial industry, the mobile communication industry. So there's there there are no limits. <coughs> Do you, do you guys, uh, does the carrier own access to this lake of data or does the service provider own access to the lake of data? The data is owned by, 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 um, by the carrier. So, so you can leverage it in any way that, any kind of serendipitous ways that come out. As well. well, considering all the legal and regulatory requirements, obviously. And it's stored within the data center as close to right. us, which is possible, so it's not in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Great. So you got but that. I think the other kind of thing, if you look at what we're doing, you talk about going to different industries. Yeah. I think it's a really good analogy with the relational database industry in the 80s and that you had a relational database and you had customer relationship management systems on the same system as a HR system, on the yeah. same system as a ERP system. Yeah. So you suddenly have a common way to store data across applications. That's exactly what a, a data lake does. And so you, you can use that for multiple areas within a, within a mobile operator. But we also, you look at technically what we're doing, it's completely applicable to the banking industry. Yep. And fraudulent behavior. It's, it's uncannily identical when you yep. break it down that picture that I showed, it's exactly the same. Yep, yeah, no, I think you guys, you know, the, we had trust, uh, Trusted, which presented an award last night at the Spiff. He's also talking about how, you know, the technology they have can be applied to banking call centers or call centers. So I think you're right, the security um, issues between the two industries are very similar, not just for the fact that they both operate call centers, but for the fact that they're both tied to your credit card one way or another. And uh, that makes them a rich target for the bad guys. And if you, you know, I think one of the, the core kind of aha moments you see is, if you assume Criminals have penetrated your firewall. Yeah. And everybody knows that. So you can't protect yourself in the way you used to. The only way you, you can protect yourself is by looking at packet level behavior inside your organization. So you look at security, it's packet level behavior centered around a machine. Mm -hmm. Maybe this machine is sending information, leaking names to China. Yeah. Fraud is packet oriented information around individuals' behavior. Mm -hmm. but, they're, but they're, from a machine learning and big data perspective, very, very similar. Great. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, Volkmar, thank, thank you, you, Ian. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So next up we have